the suicide rate in the Army is growing. And unfortunately, Army experts tell me that it's not likely to go down anytime soon. This week, we're tackling one of the biggest issues in the U.S. military, specifically that of suicides among troops in the ranks, especially in the Army. It's really a mystery. They keep going up even though the military is throwing millions of dollars trying to curb this terrible scourge. In our investigation, we interviewed two widows who lost their husbands on the same day, March 21st of this year. In one of our cases, we had a young woman whose husband, a West Point graduate, an Army Apache helicopter pilot, just back from Iraq, having flown 70 combat missions, sought help six times in the week before he killed himself. Each time he was turned away or told, we can't see you now or you're talking to the wrong person until ultimately he decided to end it all. Our other subject is an army doctor, someone that the U.S. taxpayers paid a lot of money to train. He came in as a grunt, as a bomb squad guy, and he ended up going to the Pentagon's medical school in Maryland and ended up as a doctor at Tripler Army Medical Center in Hawaii. And he had been plagued with depression for seven years. And his wife constantly sought help for him from the Army. He would take some of it, but not much of it. And her ultimate plea was, Army, he's a good soldier. You can order him to get mental health care. And the Army declined to do this repeatedly, in fact, the Army told her, you know, this doesn't sound like an Army problem. This sounds more like a family problem. And several months later, the Army doctor hung himself in the hospital, which led the wife to conclude, well, maybe it wasn't such a family problem after all. He was in his uniform in the Army hospital and died the same day as the West Point graduate. We focused on these two stories because they speak volumes about the issue of suicide in the military. While the Army and the military insist they're doing all they can to protect our young men and women in uniform, what we found is that many times knocks on the mental health doors go unanswered, either because the mental health workers are overworked are overwhelmed, the lines are simply too long, or because there's still a stigma inside the military in terms of dealing with this problem. There is the notion that PTSD and traumatic brain injuries, uh, which are sort of the two signature wounds of our two past wars, don't always make themselves known when they happen. Rather, they are more like seeds that are planted and they may sprout six months, two years, three years down the road. So just because fighting is winding down both in Iraq and Afghanistan doesn't mean that the problem is going to go away anytime soon.